turn my phone on silent before people come and interrupt me. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to Child of the Kingdom. Thank you guys for coming back to my YouTube page. So I'm excited about the video I'm doing today. Today we're going to talk about Christianity and online dating. I've been getting a bunch of emails about online dating and to be completely honest with you, I have never dated online before. So I don't want to respond and be like, girl, don't do it or boy, you better do it, because I don't really know what it's all about, what it entails, what, what's good with online dating. So I don't live under a rock, and I'm very familiar with apps like Tinder and Tinder. <laughs> with those apps, there's like a sexual stigma that comes along with them. And as a Christian, we are obviously know that we are, you know, we are responsible for upholding a certain degree of purity. And the covenant with God requires us to also keep our temples very pure. And um, because of that, sexual um, activity prior to marriage is in is not encouraged because that is basically sexual immorality, taking something that belongs to one co covenant and basically applying it to your life. So with that, I, I immediately will be like, well, why do you want to join Tinder if it's all about sex? But it was brought to my knowledge that these apps are not all about sex and apparently you can actually meet people, like just talk and stuff. So I was like, cool, cool. Again, I don't have any experience with these things. So I was like, I don't want to come on here and just make general assumptions. I'm going to make an account on one of these apps and I'm going to keep it for however long I need to until I've acquired enough information and then I'm going to keep it pushing. So I did that, y'all, and I was literally shaking. I was like, Lord, I'm doing this. Oh my God, God, tell me if you don't want me to do it, I won't do it. I was shaking, but God was like, do it. So I was like, okay. He was saying for me to do it for experimental purposes, so I did. I did it, and in my bio, I said, you know, I'm not here looking for a sugar daddy, a baby daddy, a boyfriend. I'm literally doing research, so, and I want to know about you. So I was able to get into contact with some people. I don't know these people. Only through the app is how I know them. I was able to get in contact with them, and they shed a lot of light on different things, and including why they use the app. So let's get started. So the app I was using, I don't think I need to tell you the app I was using. I was not using Tinder. I just typed in dating app onto the Play Store. I have an Android and I just kind of, um, you know, did it there. The app is deleted and the profile is down now because it was only for experimental purposes. So those of you that are going to come at me for that, I genuinely only did it for experimental purposes. Okay. The first thing I want to talk about is this. Why are you on the dating app? Why are you on Tinder? Why are you on Plenty of Fish? Why are you on Bubble? Why are you on all these other apps? Why are you on them? Always analyze your intention. If you are doing something because you are lonely, if you're doing something because you are bored, if you're doing something other than to glorify God, there's an issue. Now, I understand that we're all human and we all want to have a partner. We all want to feel love. We all want to have companionship. So I understand that sometimes you want to move in purpose with someone and that's not a wrong thing. That's not bad. I'm not trying to condemn anyone for that, but for those people that literally like to just feel comfort or they feel safe and secure having lots of males numbers on their phones or, you know, they feel validation from men saying, oh, I think your profile is really pretty, da, 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 da. those type of things, you need to evaluate. What is my intention? Is this coming from a place of purpose or is this coming from a place of low self-esteem? Is this coming from a place of seeking male validation? Is this coming from a place, a place of attention seeking? What exactly are you doing and why are you doing it? The second thing I want to bring up to you guys is the time involved. I had the app for about six days and the time involved in being on this app was crazy. Okay, first off, and I'm going to include screenshots. Let me make sure I'm looking at the right picture as I'm talking to you guys. Okay, so first off, you guys can see that it says meet me and then it has like 99 plus. There were 99 plus people that had clicked yes on the meet me section in the app. 99 plus people. So with this, I had to now go through, I didn't go through them, but if I was using the app for, you know, a relationship purpose, I have, I would have to have go through, gone through 99 plus profiles and basically select what I want and what I don't want. So with this process, I was really thinking about it and I'm like, I can understand why someone wouldn't enjoy this because if I'm not attracted to this, I don't want it. If I'm attracted to this, I want it, right? We, that's, that's a very cardinal mindset, but I don't know about you guys, but walking in purpose with someone is a spiritual connection. So you're basically denying or um, accepting a profile based on someone's face, not based off of what they have to offer or their spiritual growth, their relationship with God. It's literally just physical. And if God isn't judging from the physical, why are we? Now, again, I understand we all have our preferences. We have our turn-ons and our turn-offs, and that is completely normal and okay. But what I'm trying to say is, 
everything on these apps is very carnal. It's very carnal. You have a small portion to write a bio, but what people are really judging you off of is how does your face look? Okay, let's be real here. If you if your picture's not popping, you're not gonna have 99 plus messages. And that's not the right way to live. That's not that's not cool, okay? So that 99 plus there was time consuming. That's another thing that I want to talk about. Time consuming. You have to now go through these profiles, read each profile, pick what you want, pick what you don't want. So there's a harm in that and there's a risk in that, okay? I understand again, we all have preferences, so we all wanna pick what we like and then reject what we don't like. But we have to also factor in that I don't know my future. I don't know how I'm going to be when I'm 30. I don't know how I'm going to be when I'm 40. I don't know. And if I'm picking a partner that I wanna do long-term life with, how will I know what characteristics I need in a partner that will suit me 40, 50 years down the line? That was me. So I was thinking, okay, so I'm reading different bios and I'm acting as if I'm really going to like, you know, pursue someone, just acting, okay? And I was like, okay, so what bio is quality? What's a quality bio? D emojis or no emojis? Spelling mistakes or no spelling mistakes? Do these things dictate the kind of character you're going to, to meet when you click match on, on the app? No, okay? So everything, again, it's very carnal. It's he's cute and she's cute. Let's pair them together. And as we know, spiritual, spiritual relationships and spirituality have nothing to do with your face. So that's one thing that I just kind of, you know, it was just kind of off for me. Now, another thing, um, when you're on these apps, you now have to start up conversations. That was one of the most awkward things. Me, I had to talk to people on the app and ask them about why they were using the app. Just to do that, I felt awkward. I was like, so what do I say? So how do I start a conversation? So they said, hey, I say, hey, like, how does this work? And so think about it. If you're really using these apps to build real relationships, like real, real long-term relationships with people, what kind of questions do you ask? What do you do you give them a 20 question survey and if they comply then you move forward with them? What kind of conversations do you have that are purposeful with strangers, right? Over an app. And not just over an app, over a dating app. So now there's added pressure because we're not just chatting for friendship. We're chatting because we both are seeking a relationship. So what kind of questions do you ask? And again, it's so much pressure almost. Even for me, I felt that way. So much pressure to say the right thing in this small allotted time because I'm trying to, you know, convey a certain message or come across as a certain way. Everything just kind of came off as really manufactured, in my opinion. If we look at Isaiah 55, 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So the way you're going to, you know, go about finding a partner isn't the way God exactly is going to go about and find a partner. I'm not saying now that you can't find a partner on these apps, but I am saying that your thought process and your plans and your procedure and your system is a lot different than what God is going to do and how God would work work in your life and we constantly pray these prayers and say Lord it's your will let your will be done but then using a dating app like this and kind of going in and basically saying I'm God this is my will I like him and I don't like her I like his bio I don't like his bio it's all your will it's all your way it's by your might if you want to see you know benefits and blessings pour out onto you in your life in all aspects of your life including your love life you know you got to leave it up to God leave some room for God you know leave the room for God just get out of the way and let him work. So if you're constantly on these apps, you know, how does he have room to work? You're choosing what you like. You're choosing what you don't like. You're denying and accepting. You're doing everything. And he's just at the back burner. You know, that's not how it should be. Now, I talked about it, um, the app being very time consuming, right? And so basically this is what this is what I realized. So there's a portion of the app and you can see it. I probably put a picture of it on the screen and there's places where you can have different there's different guys faces and you can scroll through and read their bios and stuff like that. And then there's a portion where it's like you match this person this person said they want to match with you. Yes or no. So I I'm sure I've inserted two of the photos here. All right, did I? Can you see them? Okay, great. So with these photos, right? Basically, this is what I'm trying to say. I feel like these kind of apps kind of reinforce this idea of loneliness because if you already feel lonely being single, if you already feel very lonely and very um, alienated as a single person and you go on these apps, you put your picture up, you put a bio up, you, you set up your profile and you're ready to meet people, you're ready to go mingle, literally. And then you can literally see the people that said yes and the people that said no all on your phone 
I feel like it reinforces this idea of loneliness because now you can attach a face to the rejection. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you see the profiles that you viewed, they saw that you viewed it and they didn't click match with you. So because of that, I feel like it's going to just valid, not validate. So I reinforce this idea of now I'm super lonely because it's not just that I can't find anyone. It's that I've put up a profile and people are not talking to me. And I'm not saying that you're ugly. I'm not ugly. None of us are ugly. We're beautiful in God's creations. But like I said in the beginning, we all have our preferences. And so someone out there may not prefer what you stated in your bio and they're going to opt out and they're going to click X. And once they click X, they do not want to be affiliated with you anymore. And you have to now see that all on your phone. Every time you open this phone, you're gonna ever be reminded that somebody said no. And I feel like it almost becomes, one, if you're already down about being single, why be constantly reminded that there's a, 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 a mass amount of people on here that read your profile and said no? But why be reminded like that? But at the same time, don't make it an idol because then it's gonna become obsessive. You're gonna view people's profiles, you're gonna click yes, and then you're gonna be constantly checking. Did they look at my profile yet? Did they say yes or no yet? All on your phone. And our phones are with us 24 seven. So it's just a constant reminder of rejection and appraisal. It's a constant yes or no. It's a constant reminder that I am trying to prove myself worthy to these people. And I wanna warn you that this can become an idol. You can make an idol out of an app. You can make an idol out of a website. You can, and it is risky and harmful only to you because now again, your time is now allotted to going through these 99 plus profiles. Your time is allotted to seeing if the people that you clicked yes to said yes back to you, reading all these profiles and just being so consumed with the app. And like the scripture said in Isaiah, God's ways are not your ways. And so if you want God to work and if you want his manifestations to be shown in your life, you need to get out of the way. And all of these apps to me came across as me having to do all the work. And I don't want to live a life where I have to do all the work. I'm lazy as it is. You know what I mean? But not even like that. But I literally, I want, I want God to show himself faithful in my relationships. I want him to show himself faithful in my love life. And I would feel extra burdened if I now had to select my partner that would be compatible with me now. But then hopefully, you know, it'll work out in the long run as well. Psalm 115, chapter, no, verses 4 to 8 says, Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but do not speak. Eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but do not hear. Noses, but do not smell. Um, they have hands, but do not feel. Feet, but do not walk. And they do not make a sound in their throat. Those who make them, those who make them become like them. So do all who trust in them. So the, their idols are silver and gold. gold. This scripture is basically reinforcing what I was saying before you. Idols don't have to be a celebrity or someone who's living and breathing. It's an object that you place value in. You know, it can't breathe, it can't speak, but you're trusting it anyway. And it's just like this app. This app didn't know you before you were born in the womb. This app doesn't know how many hairs you have on your head. This app doesn't know, you know, your preferences, your likes and dislikes. This app can't hear you cry at 4 a.m. in the morning. This app isn't God. But for some reason, we trust its capabilities to match us with someone who's going to be with us for the rest of eternity. Now, again, I don't want this to seem like I'm condemning people who use dating apps. I personally don't, but I'm not condemning those who do. But what I am saying is that don't make it something that pl plays a starring role in your life. Don't make these apps have a starring, leading role in your life. If this is something that you feel that you are led to do through the Holy Spirit, continue to pray about it. Fuel your usage of the app with prayer, if that's something that you want to do. It's not wrong if you're handling it with care and with instruction from God. So if that's something you feel like you're being led to do and you're feeling like you're being led to make an account on these apps, Pray about it and seal it with the blood of Jesus because you don't want the devil to use this as a tool to mess with you, as a tool to become vulnerable, to mess with your heart and to mess with your emotions and make you feel like you're lesser than. You are not lesser than. And for those of you who are contemplating being on the apps, again, think about it this way. What exactly are you doing? Why are you doing it? How is it glorifying God and how is it helping you walk in your purpose? Okay, I know that being single can sometimes be viewed as something negative. Being single can make you feel like you're alone and undesired. That's not the case. God is grooming and preparing a partner for you. You know, so you don't want to interrupt the flow. And so if you feel like you're not being called to go on these apps, but you're just oh so lonely, think about it this way. You interfering with the plans of the Lord is just stalling 
the thing that you're waiting for. It's stalling your blessing because you're so busy doing you and your will and your way. You know, just surrender to God. Surrender to him. It is going to be okay, you guys. Don't feel like you need to do what everyone else is doing because everyone's on Tinder. You need to be on Tinder. That's not the case. It's not the case. You don't need to do anything. You need to trust in God and continue to run this race. You need to seek him and everything else will be added on to you. And that should be comforting. You know, I read in Colossians, was it Colossians that I read this? Pretty sure it was. Okay, it says that Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. So anything that you're going to do, put a lot of effort into it, but understand that everything that you do is working for God, working for Jehovah, working for the Lord, not for human masters, not for people's approval, not for someone to like your profile on these apps, not for someone to click, I want to meet you, not for messages, not for hearts. You're doing it for God. So always revert back to that. What am I doing right now? And how is this actually going for God? God, are you happy with what I'm doing right now? Lord, how do you feel about me doing this? You can have and facilitate open conversations with God and ask him these questions because there are definitely people I know who've been on these apps and who have, you know, met people and they're married to them. And if that was God's will, that was God's will. But it's not going to be for everyone. You know what I mean? So you need to personalize and customize your life and say, God, you have a plan for me. First Thessalonians 5.18 says that you give thanks for all things concerning you, for this is the will of God. So you have a plan for me, not for everyone from ages 18 to 24, for me. Okay, so you have a plan for me specifically. So this specific plan, I need to know the details of this plan. Just because it worked for her, is it going to work for me, God? Where do you need me right now, God? Where do you need me right now? And I know that you know, um, people want to walk in purpose with a purpose partner and you want to be with someone. So, you know, people might be like, so can I use like Christian mingle because that's a really contained space. But like I'm saying before, all of these things are very carnal because it's all based off of your profile and how you look. So if you do feel called in some way or compelled in some way to go on Christian mingle again, fuel it with prayer, seal it with the blood of Jesus. Don't allow it to become a playground for the devil to use you and lower your self-esteem. But then also think about it this way, just because it's a contained space of Christian people doesn't mean that they're all genuine Christian people. So you have to be careful. Um, it's all a risk, right? But since we're in Colossians, I can kind of just close off with this. Colossians chapter 3 verses 15 says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. And that's how I want to close this. Be thankful that you were called to live a peaceful life. You were called to have peace of mind. When you come home from work, when you come from home from school, you weren't called to be stressed over an app. You were called to have peace of mind, and you were called to have peace of mind because God is working it out. So don't feel stressed all the time. If these apps are stressing you out, get off them. If these apps are intimidating you get off them if they have adverse effect on your life get off them because God just reminded you that anything that's causing stress or anything that's a trigger to your sin isn't what I called you to live for I called you to live for peace I called you and I've given you despite you being a sinner I've given you peace of mind so stop complicating the process that I've laid out for you and live in peace whatever triggers you have around you whatever people or influences or distractions that you have around you that are um, uh, deterring you from your peace, they gotta go because I called you to live in peace. So stop trying to unpeace yourself. Do you know what I mean? Don't unpeace yourself. If he called you to live in peace, live in it. Feel comfort and feel thankful, like the word said that you don't gotta stress. I don't gotta stress about no boo and no babe because God's got me. Okay, just like I'm going through all these trials and I'm overcoming and I'm learning and I'm in my word, the same way that someone out there is also going through their trials, overcoming and in their word. And one day we will meet and we will be able to walk in purpose that way. For now, I can chill and I can live in peace because He's called me to do so. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. So again, I'm not condemning you. If this is what you want to do and this is what you feel like God has called you to do, like I said, pray about it. Don't just say, mm, if God didn't want me to do it, then why did he create the app? Again, we give thanks for the will concerning us. So everyone else's will is not the will concerning you. Okay, pray and say, God, what do you have for me? Okay, not because Sheila and Sarah did it, I can do it. God, what do you have for me? Okay, 
pray about that and then seal it with the blood of Jesus. Cover it. God, I am doing this to find someone who is walking steadfast in you. I seal this operation with the blood of Jesus. Anything that the enemy is trying to use to distract me or to deter me from my walk, I destroy it in the name of Jesus. Lord God, let your spirit go before me. If this is what you've called me to be on, let your spirit go before me. Let your spirit guide me. Let your spirit lead me. If I'm even on these apps just to teach someone about your word or to inspire someone, let that be so. Let your will be done. And Lord, if I am just confused and it is not for me, Lord, reveal that to me and I will completely delete all the apps. You need to be in prayer about it because I can't tell you to not do something. That's it, you guys. Live in peace. Chill. Just chill. Just chill out, okay? You're gonna be okay. <laughs> you are gonna be okay. I'm single just the same way and I found that I was on this app for like six days and I was like, I'm stressed. Like, this app is taking up too much of my time. I have to go through all these pictures and it's a lot, right? And I wasn't even doing it purposefully. I was doing it as an experiment. So imagine doing it for real. It was a lot for me. So just chill. You've been called to live in peace, so do so. Don't unpeace your life. Don't complicate things that don't need to be complicated. Trust in the Lord. Rejoice in your salvation. Just because the fig tree looks empty now doesn't mean that olives won't grow. Okay, just because your love life is kind of dry and the barn's empty doesn't mean that cattle won't appear. If God could send down bread, he could send down a man. <laughs> okay, he could send down a woman. And that's just that. Just stay fleeky, you guys. Stay fleeky. Invest in yourself. Spend time on yourself. Shop for yourself. Dress for yourself. Educate yourself. Okay, you got this. I believe in you. You got this. Okay, learn how to do your hair. Learn how to do your nails. Learn how to cook. Learn how to do things that make you feel good. Play a sport. Just chill and live in peace. Have a peace of mind. Go to sleep. Your phone doesn't need to do ding, 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 ding. The whole night, ding, 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 ding. Because people are like, I want to meet you. I want to meet you. Just peace. Silence. God, just God, just have your way. Have your way. And so that's exactly what I want to talk to you guys about. I hope that you guys all enjoyed this video. Be sure to thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment down below. Let me know. Have you guys used dating apps before? What do you guys think about them? Uh, yay or nay you know what do you guys think um have you had bad experiences good experiences share them down with me my email is down below princessusu5 at gmail.com you guys can email me i've been enjoying your emails and i get back to them i'm trying to get back to them in a timely manner leave me video requests down below and i love you guys and i'll talk to you guys really soon bye, -bye.